welcome to part 4 of the Koch Fractals in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In the part after this I will show you how to create audio visuals with this system. But in this part we will add Bezier curves to the system. So let's see how we can add Bezier curves. With Bezier curves we can create smooth curves between points. To do this we will take the first point, the second and third point to create extra points in between of them. With this visual example I will explain how Bezier curves are calculated. We'll start at the first point in the loop called I. We will look at its current point plus 1 and its current point plus 2. We need to specify how many parts we want to add to our Bezier curve. In this example I'll specify 25 parts adding 24 new points. Now to create the Bezier curve we need to do 3 different lerps at a certain ratio. The ratio is 1 divided by the number of points. The first lerp is between i and i plus 1. The second lerp is between i plus 1 and i plus 2. The third lerp will lerp between the results of these two and set the point according to its current ratio. Let's see what that looks like. So this is the first step, the second step, third, fourth and so on and so on. And every time the position will change on this line, the position will change on this line as well and with the same ratio the position will change on the interpolation between the result of this and this creating a new point once we've calculated all these points we will add these points in between of the first and the third point let's open up the Koch generator and start scripting our Bezier curves We'll start by creating a boolean whether to use Bezier curves or not. So we'll type a protected boolean and we'll call this use Bezier curves. Now we want to see that in the inspector so we're going to serialize this field. Now we need to store our Bezier positions so let's create a new vector tree. Protected vector tree array and we'll call this Bezier position. Now another variable we'll need is to specify how many vertex points we want on our Bezier curve between two points. So we'll add a protected integer and we'll call this the Bezier vertex count. And we also want to see that in the inspector so let's serialize this field as well. Now we want to store our Bezier positions into a vector3 array, so we're going to create a function that will return a vector3 array. So let's go underneath here and we're going to type here a protected vector3 array and we'll call this the Bezier curve. Now our function requires two different inputs. The first input that it requires is a vector3 array of the points of either the target position or the original positions. So we're going to say here a vector3 array and we'll call this the points. And the second thing we need is the vertex count. So we'll say here an integer and we'll call this vertex count. Let's open this one and close it. Now as we are going to add a lot of points in between of the vector3 points array we will create a temporary list and in the end return the list converted to an array. So let's type a variable and we'll call this point list and it's going to be a new list of vector3. And now that we have instantiated our list let's make a for loop to go through all of the points. So let's say for int i is 0 i is less than the points array that we've got in our input dot its length and we're going to increment the i with 2 now why do we increment with 2 if this is the zero point then we're going to get the Bezier curve between this point and this point which will make a nice smooth point and then we will continue on this point going to here. So we'll skip every time one point in between and use that to create our curve. Now we only want to create a Bezier curve if there are actually two points available in the next points of the current iteration. So we need to check that with an if statement. So we're going to say that if i plus 2 
is lower than or equal to the points dot length minus one then we can iterate and do our thing and otherwise it won't create any bezier points because we haven't got enough points left now in between these if statements we are going to do our three different loops and we need a ratio for that based on the vertex count that we've got so we're going to create a for loop and in the for loop we're going to say that we're using a float and we'll call this float a ratio and the ratio is going to be zero at start now the condition is that ratio must be lower than or equal to one and here we're going to increment the ratio by one divided by the vertex count so let's see ratio plus is 1.0 divided by the vertex count now let's do our lerps we're going to create a new variable and we'll call this the tangent line vertex one and this is going to be a vector three the lerp and we're going to lerp from points list of the current point to the points i plus one and we're going to use here the ratio amount now let's copy paste this line and we're going to do the same with the second one and that will go from the i plus one to the i plus two now that we've calculated the first and second lines we can do our third lerp and this we will call the bezier point that we need and that is going to be a vector three dot lerp between the tangent line vertex one and the tangent line vertex 2 and again we'll use the ratio here now because we've set this to start at 0 it will take the start point and as this is less or than or equal to 1 then it will also take the ending point so we're going to add all of these points to the list so let's do that so we'll say the point list dot add is going to be the bezier point now all we need to do in our function is return our point list to an array so we'll say return point list dot to array now that this function is done we still need to call the function so let's scroll down to the core generate and here we've got the position and target position that we assign so let's also do the same for the bezier position so we'll type bezier position is going to be and here we'll get the bezier curve that we created and we will input here the target position and we'll get the bezier vertex count now you'll notice that we haven't used the use bezier curves boolean but we're going to apply that boolean in the Koch line script that inherits from the script now another little thing I want to do is to set a range on this integer of vertex count so we'll say range and let's say that the range starts at 8 and finishes at 24 at top now with that in place let's save this script and go back to unity and now you'll notice that the Koch line shows the use bezier curves boolean and also shows our slider of vertex count but it doesn't do anything yet and we're going to change the Koch line script as well inside the Koch line script we're going to implement the use bezier curves boolean so underneath this for loop where we're creating the lerp positions let's create an if statement and we're going to say that if we're using bezier curves then we're going to do something and if we're not using the bezier curves so else then we're going to do something else now if we're not using the bezier curves we're going to do this line and let's also set the position count so we'll say line renderer dot position count is going to be the alert position dot length 
Now if we are using Bezier curves, let's create Bezier curves based on the lerp position so we can lerp in between of these Bezier curves. So we'll say that Bezier position is going to be the Bezier curve. And here instead of the target position, we're going to use the lerp position. And we'll use the vertex count of Bezier curves. Now let's set the line renderer dot its position count to the Bezier position dot its length. And finally let's set the positions of the line renderer. So line renderer dot set positions. And we're going to input here the Bezier position. Now with that in place, let's test out the script. So let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now back in Unity, let's test out our Bezier curves. We can tick on the Bezier curves and set the vertex count. And let's play this. Now you'll first notice that you won't see any Bezier curves because it's only working on anything that has a generation of one or more. So we'll need to do our first generation. So let's do a generation of 10 outwards. I'll press the OK and then I'll increase the lerp amount and you'll see that the Bezier curves are working. Now we can switch back to not using any Bezier curves and you'll see that result so we can switch in between of these. Now we can do another generation at 5 for example and we're going outwards again. Now because it's now all at 0 it will look like it's snapping back to the non-using of Bezier curves, but that's not true because if we increase this it will create Bezier curves in between of these points. Now you can check this off again and see the different results of using Bezier curves and no Bezier curves. So you get some very different outputs in the result. Now let's go on and add another one at let's say 8 and we're going inwards now let's set this at a lerpin amount of 0 0.2 and you can see some cool different results. Now a line renderer will not be your best choice to use Bezier curves if you're using a lot of generations because in between all of these points it will create new geometry. But Bezier curves can be very useful and pretty on trail renderers. So in the next part I will show you some cool ways of visualizing this system and combining this with the audio peer class to create some audio visualizations. But for now I want to thank you for following this tutorial. If you liked the tutorial leave a thumbs up and to stay updated with new released parts subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support me creating these tutorials for free you can become a patron at my Patreon and get access to cool source code.